Like the fabled goose that laid the golden egg, federally funded scientific research has yielded extraordinary yet unexpected returns. Out of odd sounding, obscure beginnings come many amazing advances that have improved each of our lives. The Golden Goose Award recognizes the people and the stories behind these unexpected and incredible scientific breakthroughs. To begin with, each bee is gonna get a little dot of the orange paint just a little dot on the tip of the abdomen because their body temperature is below about 40 degrees Fahrenheit they're immobilized. Now I'll take each of these bees and put them in the recovery chamber. It's labeled another little bunch of bees. I had been interested in how could you possibly control a whole bunch of robots without any humans around. I had gotten a Presidential Young Investigator Award from National Science Foundation. So I had wanted to work with John Van de Vate, and he heard Tom Seeley talking about honeybees on NPR. Tom was simply telling that his story, and uh, it immediately struck me as one that was relevant for industrial engineering. So we started to read up on honeybees. An enormous amount was known about what one bee does. But nobody had figured out what that means for the colony. What happens on the system level? John sort of joked, maybe the honeybees should hire us as consultants. Yeah, that's an interesting question. How do the honeybees do it? We laugh because we probably could not help them, but maybe they could help us. How good is the colony at gathering nectar uh, to survive the winter. The key part of this investigation was creating a situation in which I could monitor what the individual bees were doing. If you want to count how many bees are working that food source, you have to be able to s identify every bee. So you know that that bee's been there, and that bee's been there, and that bee's been there. And to do that, I had to create a study colony in which all 4,000 worker bees were labeled for individual identification. We had predictions as to how the honeybee colony would allocate its forager bees amongst different patches. And when we did the experiment, the bees nailed it. And I think we were all rather stunned by what the, how well the bees had, had solved that problem. So then, years later, Sunil Nakrani knocked on my door and he wanted a good algorithm to allocate the servers at a web hosting facility. And over the next 15, 20 minutes, my jaw started to drop because everything he said matched up with what the honeybee colony faces. At that point, he pulled out a paper, actually. He had a paper that he had written with Tom Seeley and then John Bartholdi way back, 15 years old. Uh, and then just put it on the table and we started going through. And it, as I described more and more details about the problem, he found a corresponding uh, kind of structure match in the problem uh, that honeybees trying to solve. And that's that point we were really excited. And the real clincher was when a honeybee follows a waggle dance, she usually doesn't make it to the new flower patch on the first try. and takes a little while for her to get more efficient. So it's not a zero cost to change from one flower patch to another, just like it's not a zero cost choice to repurpose your server and take care of the weather channel instead of the bank. Companies that are web hosting, at least one very big one, is using this algorithm. And it generates anywhere from five to almost 25% more revenue. If the work wasn't funded in in the first place, the result that they formulated 15 years ago, you know, even if I had come up with this problem, we couldn't have been able to go down this path. The federal funding is indispensable, essential ingredient. When you do research, you don't know where it's going to lead. The discovery, the understanding for me is the most fun thing. My greatest satisfaction comes from 
the pride of just being able to unravel this piece of nature. People are still criticizing scientists for being just interested. But that's how we make progress. You, know, you don't know in advance what the benefit is going to be to society, but um, without science, you wouldn't have those benefits. Scientific research undergirds the way we live today, the, the way we solve problems today. Some research without end goal is very important. Really good outcomes for society can occur in a completely unplanned way, just because people are fascinated by something. To get federal funding for a research project is extremely competitive. Where the money goes, it goes to the cream of the crop of the, of the grant applications. And you, you can bet that if somebody's got federal funding, they've worked their ass off. People are motivated to do it and to do it well. All the things that we take for granted in this world today are the product of federally funded research to universities.